So finally for today, uh, let's check that the regularizations we defined are actually regularizations with respect to our definition. Now, uh, we want to look at these in a more general form. So I will just show you my mouse. Yes. Um, so uh, we look at general regularizations in the form k alpha plus g equals to sum over k g alpha of sigma k times a scalar product of g and v k times u k. And um, uh, the, that uh, the g alpha that we have over here should be a function from r plus to r plus. And in some way, it should converge to k plus g for alpha equal for alpha going to zero, and uh, so that's why I wrote down k alpha plus here as well. Now, uh, our Tikhonov regularization fits into that scheme by defining kg alpha of sigma as sigma over alpha squared plus sigma squared. And uh, our truncated SVD fits into that scheme by defining g alpha of sigma as zero for sigma smaller than alpha and one over sigma for sigma larger than alpha. And uh, yeah, that's, I mean, that the second one is maybe a little bit less obvious. Um, it just leaves the terms in the sum where the sigma is larger than alpha and then uh, we, otherwise we get k plus g. Okay, um, so we would like k alpha plus g to converge to k plus g when alpha goes to zero. Now, what would we expect? We well, definitely would expect that at least the point wise, we need to have some kind of convergent of g alpha of sigma to one over sigma. So uh, that's what we require first. Now, the second thing is, uh, it's not completely clear that k alpha plus g is at all defined. I mean, if k g alpha of sigma goes to infinity, there's no point in that. So we need some common bound on the g alpha of sigma, on, on, we need a bound on this uh, g alpha of sigma for each alpha. And we require that the uh, sub of sigma, g, that g alpha of sigma is uh, smaller than, smaller or equal to some C alpha independent of sigma. But of course, with alpha, um, <laughs> it may depend on alpha, it's there. And uh, finally, we require uh, that uh, the sub over uh, all alpha and sigma, sigma times G alpha of sigma is smaller or equal to C, to some common constant C. Now, uh, let's first check that uh, uh, our regularization um, examples actually satisfy these conditions. I mean, that's uh, definitely clear for, for number one, uh, so I won't do that. But what about the second one? The supremum over all sigma g alpha of sigma. Um, if you look at this over here, then you uh, find that uh, taking the derivative, the maximum of that function is uh, given at sigma equals to alpha. So the maximum is uh, of that function is alpha over two alpha squared. Uh, so that's one over two alpha. Okay, so in uh, for Tikhonov, C alpha is one over two alpha. And uh, the common bound C, now uh, multiplying this with sigma, multiplying this with sigma, we have sigma squared over alpha squared plus sigma squared. So for uh, alpha larger than zero, which we always assume, uh, that's bounded ab above definitely by uh, C, uh, capital C equal to one. Now, what about truncated SVD? Well, um, the g alpha of sigma is one over sigma for sigma larger than alpha. So sigma is at least alpha. So one over uh, sigma is bounded by one over alpha. So definitely we have c alpha equal to one uh, over alpha. And of course, again, we have capital C. We can choose capital C equal to one. So um, our examples satisfy these conditions. Um, I claim that under these conditions, uh, k alpha plus is well defined, it's continuous, and its norm is bounded from above by c alpha. 
And uh, um, uh, what is more, K alpha plus G converges to K plus G, provided that G is in the domain of K plus. Okay, for the first thing, choose any G in X and uh, compute the norm of K alpha plus G squared. Now inserting the definition of K alpha plus, we arrive at this. And this is uh, since the UK are um, an orthonormal, uh, are an, uh, an orthonormal system, but they're a singular system. We have that um, this is the same as uh, the sum over all k coefficient squared. So g alpha of sigma k squared times g and v k squared. Now the g alpha of sigma k are smaller or equal to c alpha. So we have that smaller than sum over all k, g and v k squared. So again, by Bessel's inequality, we have that this is smaller or equal to c alpha squared. Oops. C alpha squared times the norm of G squared. And uh, we have that uh, the norm of K alpha plus is smaller or equal to C alpha. And of course, K alpha plus is continuous. Um, now, fix a G in the domain of K plus, which means that K plus G exists. So the, the sum in the singular value representation of k plus exists. And uh, that means that the sum over all k, one over sigma k squared, g and vk squared is smaller than infinity. We already wrote that down. And I want to name that relation, that inequality. It's also called the Picard criterion because it, uh, if you're given a g somewhere, you can easily find if it's in the domain because it has to satisfy the condition, right? Okay. Um, so let's now look at the difference between the uh, that should be uh, yeah uh, at the difference between um, k alpha plus g and k plus g and of course we want that difference to go to zero um, and first of all plugging in the definitions this is nothing but the sum over all k one over sigma k minus g alpha of sigma k squared times g and vk. So um, that's just plugging in the definitions of g uh, of uh, k alpha plus and k plus. And again, realizing that uk is an orthonormal system. So all we need to do is uh, square the coefficients and sum up. And uh, this is the same as, whoops, what happened? This is the same or taking the one over sigma out. This is the same as one over sigma, sum of all k, one over sigma k squared, one minus sigma k times g alpha of sigma k squared times the product of g and vk. Now we assumed that independent of alpha and sigma, this is smaller than some constant c. So the whole thing is here is smaller than c squared, since sigma k g alpha is positive. And um, well, in addition, so the uh, so the, the value that we here have here is uh, smaller or equal to c squared times the sum over all k, one over sigma k squared g and v k squared. And uh, this is just what we show to be smaller than infinity. So this sum is bounded from above by a constant independent of alpha. And that means we can interchange the roles of um, um, taking the limit and taking summation when, um, when letting uh, alpha tend to zero. So if I look at the uh, limiting value of alpha going to zero, k alpha plus g minus k plus g squared, norm squared, uh, then um, I can interchange the limit of alpha and summation and taking the summation here. So uh, this is nothing but the sum of, it converges to the sum over all k, one over sigma k squared, one minus sigma k times the limiting value of g alpha of sigma k, 
squared. But this one goes to one over sigma k, according to uh, what we required. So this goes to zero. And so this sum is completely zero. So that means that k alpha plus g converges to k plus g for alpha going to zero. OK, uh, that's nice. And uh, I insist that uh, um, now there is a parameter rule that uh, makes this um, a regularization. This makes k alpha plus a regularization. And uh, we take, uh, for, we call this corollary 3.5. And uh, we choose a parameter rule such that alpha of delta and g delta goes to zero for delta going to zero and delta times the norm of k alpha of delta and g delta plus also going to zero. Now, is that possible? Um, at least it's possible for our examples above because uh, let's assume that k alpha plus, which the norm of k alpha plus, which I denote by g alpha is strictly decreasing. And that was true for our examples. I mean, if you remember, there that C alpha was given either as one over two alpha or as one over alpha. So definitely this is a strictly decreasing function. Okay, um, so if I define alpha of delta by g to the min of, minus one of one over square root delta, then first, I mean, for delta going to zero, uh, one over square root of delta goes to infinity. So if, since everything is strictly decreasing, uh, we have that alpha of delta goes to zero. And also uh, delta times k alpha plus, uh, k alpha of delta plus, um, that's, um, that's now g of g, um, to the minus one of one over square root delta. So that's one over square root delta and uh, delta times one over square root delta is square root delta. So that goes to zero as well. So there is, uh, if um, um, uh, um, the norm of K alpha plus is strictly decreasing and that was the case for our, um, for our example above, then um, uh, this, Parameter choice is possible, which I which I have over here. Okay, and uh, I claim that in this case, alpha, uh, k alpha plus together with the param parameter choice rule alpha is a regularization of k plus f equals g. Now uh, we'll take the definition. We'll take the um, uh, we'll take the definition to prove this. And we take any g in the definition uh, in the domain of k plus fixed, and we take an approximation to g uh, with an error uh, not larger than delta. And as we already used several times, probably we now have that k alpha of delta times g delta minus k plus g is more or equal to delta times the norm of k alpha of, of delta by um, what I do, of course, is I plug in this k, uh, k alpha of delta times g, I inject it, subtract it, and then uh, I get uh, uh, the, the sum of these two terms. We've used that several times already. So now uh, this is k alpha of delta times g delta minus g, g delta minus g in the norm uh, is limited by, uh, is bounded by delta. So this is, not, is uh, less or equal to delta times the norm of k alpha of delta. And the term over here, um, we don't completely know what it is, but at least we just showed in the lemma before that this goes to zero for uh, alpha uh, going to zero. So since if delta goes to zero, alpha of delta goes to zero, this goes to zero as well. So this is bounded by something that's limited by delta. So this goes to zero, this goes to zero according to our um, to, uh, to, to what we required. And this goes to zero as well with delta going to zero. So everything goes to zero, which means that K alpha of delta G delta converges to K plus G. And uh, well, that's, uh, 
that, uh, that means that alpha and k alpha plus is a regularization. Okay, that uh, was it for today. And uh, we'll discuss the outcome of this uh, in a better way next week. And uh, well, I wish you a great weekend.